Okay, continuing with what we're trying to do is we're trying to port the iframe menu into Svelte because the iframe has some limitations where we uh, close when we're over here. First of all, it has to open up two sockets, right? One in the one in the iframe and one out here, so it's not as performant, it uses more resources. Secondly, you're kind of contained to being within the iframe and you're not, any modals that you open up, uh, for example, like this, stay contained here instead of being able to reach outside of the iframe. Whereas this potentially could because we are not within an iframe, we're just in div and um, also I have some reservations about loading all of the entities into memory on the Elixir process side, whereas this, it's just in the browser. So we're pointing this over, and I'm noticing that when we take actions over here, this changing this will the functionality only lives in the live view, so only in here. The component change, and we're not really using a context here. We're using the component module doing a change set. And so if I wanted to replicate that over here, I can't easily call that because that's in the live view process. So if I change a component here, who do I send this message to? I don't have something that I can call on the other side. So I wanted to do some refactoring to pull the functionality out into a, an API that can handle this. So in this process, I need a context, the backend API to support create a primitive box, cone, sphere, etc. To so that creates an entity with default components. Then modify a component. That's to update position, rotation, color, scale, etc. These two things I think need to be extracted out of this. So we've got component change and um, yeah, a lot of this is live view specific. Let's see, including the broadcasting. So I, I would like the context to do the broadcasting. So just everybody, everybody gets the message. So component change, select component, select entity, add entity. I think it's really just these two. Oh, a delete entity, fine, and a delete entity. That API allows you all the power to manipulate a space. And it should be in the spaces context, which is here. And I will go through and delete some unused stuff because earlier I was in here and I noticed some stuff. Okay, serialize we need. We're no longer really talking about this complex uh, concept called the template, so I'll just remove this template business. We even still have that model spaces template. Yeah, we still have it here. Um, yeah, um, it's, we can clean this up later. So let's remove plugin and template code everywhere. Let's make that as a to do.
back to spaces. Uh, let's remove some of the plugin stuff. Change a plugin. Plugin is a concept currently not fully fleshed out. It's confusing to be in here. Okay, that saves us quite a bit of code. All right, we have this change component, which takes a component and some attributes. And I think I want to change this a bit, is that if we're getting this call from the front end, maybe we just take the attributes, the new attributes, and then we just create um, the component change set. Actually, this isn't even changing it. This is just preparing a change set. So, not even really that convenient. And are we using these things? Change component, delete component, update component. Create a component for entity. See, what does serialize do? Serialize list entities for space with components. Does this preloads components? And what is the serialization of component? So up here, we say derive only the type and the data. Okay. Entities, change space, delete space, broadcast space. Okay, here's one where we broadcast based on a context message. I want to see more of this. It's about nesting things, which lately I've taken a break from. OK. Um, let's start with the first one. Create a primitive box, cone sphere. All right, let's look inside. Let's do a split screen here with that and spaces. So when we want to create an entity, what do we get doing that? We're saying prep some attributes. So we need the space ID and the kind. And then we just go ahead and call this. And I think we should return the new entity. Okay, we can just, uh, let's wear most of the entities. Uh, let's just put them all at the bottom then. We can find them later after serialize. Okay. Let's call this add entity and we need the space and we need the entity kind. And we'll create some attributes. Copy this, put it over here. So we get attributes. Space ID is the space ID. There's no socket. And we got the entity kind. And then we say spaces create entity, 
with the attributes. So we get back the new entity. And then with the entity, we now preload the components. OK, so we did have something that created the entity. It just didn't broadcast. So we're going to add entity with broadcast. Is that what we called the ones above when we were broadcasting? We called this um, broadcast space update. Update space. No, we didn't. So this will need like a broadcast so this is only only giving the space settings change I think we might need something similar anyway going through here <clears throat> what does create entity do create entity You build the default components. Okay, so built and it, yeah, it did a multi transaction. Great. Okay, so this actually created everything. <clears throat> and so we get back the entity and now we preload the components. And that's and that's necessary because we don't have the components here. When we create entity, build default components, and then we get uh, multi insert transaction, and we just handed back the entity that we get back from repo insert. Mm. Okay, which didn't contain. All right, okay, that's fine. All right, let's just go to the bottom. All right, so we're still good. Then we load the components. That's why it takes so long, I think. You insert all those things, but then you also make a query to fetch them. And you have to serialize them. So you get back the entity. And then we can broadcast entity created with the entity. Okay, so we're utilizing this function to create, but now we're broadcasting. And we got broadcast with the space slug. And what's going on here? Create entity is undefined. Oh, okay, create entity requires two things, right? Space. Is that what it requires? Create entity. Oh, no, it takes one argument but I bet it has the space ID inside it. Create entity. Yeah, it had the space ID here. Hmm? Like this. Create entity one is undefined. Module spaces is an O. Oh, just use yourself.
Okay, so if we do that part. And theoretically, we don't need any of this now. Now you can just say spaces dot add entity with a broadcast hand it the space and hand it the entity kind and what does this return? This should return an entity. So return entity. I guess we can return OK and Entity. <clears throat> sure, return OK and Entity, because it's possible it could fail. So we'll just say OK and Entity. <clears throat> And so if we, let's see right here, can never match the type, nil atom, blah, blah, blah. Does it just need to update maybe? Never match the type nil or this or this. Add entity with broadcast. Yeah. Let's try it, see what happens. <clears throat> Come over here. Where's the cone? Let's delete it and then add what? Something happened. Yeah, that's the other reason I want to get rid of the iframe. Sometimes it does that. Maybe it was just doing an auto reload at a bad time. So go to cone, add. There's my cone. What happened here? Something crashed. No match of right hand side value. I got an entity. Uh, spaces, add entity with broadcast. Come back with OK and entity. I'm saying, oh, did I not save it on the site? Gosh, all right. File. Let's close this. And reopen it. Still, what's going on? Spaces. <clears throat> Okay, entity can never match the type nil or um, create entity. What does this give back? This gives back okay and an entity. That's what it says it gives back. It gives back okay and entity. All right. So what's
what's the deal here? Create an entity, repo preload. Let's just do this. I will inspect and the label is return value. Okay, you're giving back this and you're matching that on this side. So let's check to see if that's what you're pulling up about. Let me start this. Go back into the space and open up the menu and delete one of these boxes, add and delete the cone, add a new cone. Okay, where's my insert into entities return value? Okay, and the the data. And we seem to be okay. I don't think it crashed. One more time. Remove the cone. Add a cone. Refresh the screen. Cone is there. Okay, maybe it's the dialyzer getting screwed up. Let me try restarting. It's still underlining it. I don't understand. <clears throat> Maybe it's warning that it potentially could give back something else. first objective here. Okay, our next, okay, so you can create a primitive Create a primitive. So this one is done. Next one. Modify a component. So where are we modifying? We are in change component here. So let's go to spaces. And in this one, 
let's do modify or yeah modify component with a broadcast give it a space and um, maybe give me the type and the data so what happens here so we're creating the component change set and then doing this uh, this isn't the com this is saving the component so this is when you're making updates this isn't when you uh, actually save the component to do that I think modify this oh it's auto saved so yeah we change this and then we call auto save so we we are constantly updating the change set and then we call the save which i think will just save the component so okay i need to copy some of this not sure if we're going to use it but let's take a look at the bounce auto save so here Debouncing the auto save, canceling timer, and then finally we call auto save and if there's a change set and there's an action update, then we finally get back a component by calling repo update with the change set and we get back a new component and then this should prevent needless saves if no action is set then we assign back into the socket the updated change set and we broadcast this out Select the entity update components. Okay, so we update, we update some things. All right, so if we're just getting this data though, <clears throat> ignoring the live view stuff, we get component, we can have a component change set which is made up of the previous component chain set and the component. So he's got a component, and then he removes. We remove errors. We cast the type, the entity ID. So we need an entity ID. No, yeah, it's not required. But I think we do need an entity ID if we're saving it. And if we're calling update on it, we need to know the ID.
we need the ID. So you're better off just giving us the Oh, hold on. Component change set. It was just the... Hold on, hold on. The entity ID. It's not the component ID. Well, you're handing the component in, which may have the ID already. But we do need an entity ID, otherwise we don't know which component to update. So we need the entity ID. We do need the entity ID. Then the type, then the data. Because then you can construct a chain set but you still need to know the ID you'd have to do like get component ID from entity ID and type. Maybe just get component. Do we have a get component? Get the component by ID. Create a component for entity. Let's do a get component by entity ID. Just give the entity ID and the type. And you do repo dot get component and the entity ID is entity ID and the type is That work? Let's try this. Repo get by component entity ID is or maybe type box. What does this do? Select all this stuff from components where type is box. Repo all component type. Oh, sorry, that's the uh, type of the color. Expected at most one result, but got three. Okay, and how about? What is this? This is called a uh, scale. Copy. 
Copy this. So you do get by entity ID and the type, and it will give you <clears throat> result. That is a component. So you go down here, and say component equal get component with entity ID type then component change set will be component change set so you component and the adders are going to be that the data is the data comes through, remove errors, data is required. Put into adders data the type. Who was calling component change set? Who is using component change set? Component change and what values are they putting in? So they somebody else has created component for entities putting the type in. So it already has the type when you're creating it. And so if you're changing it, you don't need to modify this type business. Uh, uh, because it's, oh, we put it in here. Okay, so, yeah, okay, that's being stored on the column we still need this part because the data can't can't not have this okay so we still need to put that in don't we okay we could handle this on the component end and say if you don't have the type, we need to put it in, right? Which was it? What this was? Component. So you can get the type. Type equals adders type or component dot type. data put adders data if it doesn't have a type and then adders put that there um, sure first we convert them all to atoms and then we go component.type. If you don't have it there, then we look for it in there. And data. So 
we'll put into adders data type and then adders data is updated place type in data if it's missing So in spaces, create component for entities that, and then if we want to <clears throat> update the component, actually we could do it here too. We're getting the type. So if we get the data, we can also just do this. We can get the type of that. <clears throat> so it's the type is there. So we'll get adders type and we'll put it in there. But it's not there. So that gives us the component change set. Then we apply the action that gives you a new change set and then we update and hopefully this gives us an okay component where we go update change that there. <clears throat> Component change that. What's the deal here? Undefined. Oh, apply action. Chain ecto. Change. Change. That. Apply action, I think. Then we broadcast. Slug component changed. Component blah 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 blah, all those things. What happened here? has no local return. So go back and OK and a component. How about that? Component. The call update error. Okay, so you're saying it could have an error, right? <clears throat> so I think we need to do a with then. So with Just take that part and then pipe it to this business here. And then case. Okay. Go update with component change set 
do. Uh, case. And then what happens? You'll get OK. And the component. If that happens, you do something. Otherwise, might get error. Reason and just get back. Go and change that. change that. Component change said da, 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 da. Mm. Maybe I just don't care what it is. Has no local return. I don't understand what this means. Hmm. Somewhere the code path would result in your function not returning a value. Okay, that's helpful. Oh, so broadcast doesn't get back anything. Okay, and the component. That should be okay. Change that. Error and change that. Are there other paths?
I don't know. It seems like I've covered all the cases. If you have a case here, if you get an OK, if you get an error, if you modify component of broadcast, maybe this is because it's unused. Let's try to use it. Oh, I can't use it in this style. But I can use it here. File. Now we have a space, we need an entity ID. All entity. There is a cone. We'll change the color of the cone. Copy entity ID equal that. And the type will be color and so we'll do spaces update component with modify component with broadcast the space the entity ID the type which is type and the data would be a map and the value will be RGB green. Okay, failed. Following what arguments were given to ecto change set cast. Okay. Tempton function clause cast. Oh, this was null? Okay, let's see if we get a component. <clears throat> component equal get okay, spaces get component by entity ID. So we got entity ID and the type the type Oh, we got nil for sure. Okay, yes, because this could be nil.
first of all, show me the spaces get entity entity ID. Okay, I must just have a bad entity ID. I thought I did equal entity. Oh, I must have copied the space ID. The entity ID is probably this one for the cone. So copy. All right. So entity ID is this ID. All right. Now we get the component. It is there, and we want to modify this. Okay, got a different error here. Invalid string example. Oh. Okay, yeah. This could be null. This could be an error. Yeah. Oh, it needs a hash mark. Okay, came back with okay. Okay. Probably need to fix this a little bit. So How do I make this a little bit more resilient than the pipeline of issues it can have? The width. So if you have this habit of giving back OK all the time, then you can easily chain these things together. So get component, let's just return, let's see, get by returns. Okay, so case. Nil, then 
return error not found. Otherwise, you have the entity. I'm sorry, you have the component. Return OK and the component. Then when we use it down below, you can say with an OK and the component. And an OK with the change set coming from this. Do, is that when we use do? Do. Which will give you an OK. OK, OK. We want an OK. Just let it rebind. Okay, component equal repo update with the change set. And then if that's all good, then we broadcast. So if we can get the component by the ID and you can get the change set and then you make a change to the database, if all those are successful, then you broadcast that. Else, whatever the error is, you can return error and the what do we have? I guess error and the error. Put this now out. Else will never match because all patterns and width will always match. What does that mean? However, a verb on the left side, in other words, the above will treat the error as match and continue down the success path. So if you match against any error reason, then you can return return that.
I'm a little confused why it's not, why it's warning me on. Else clause will never match because all patterns in width will always match. But this can return a one of these. Error not found. So what's the idea here? So if we get rid of this, it's happy, I think. So giving a struct to ecto repo update is not supported. Oh, what? Wait, wait. If you oh, if you apply the action, you get back data. Applies the change set action only if changes are valid. If the changes are valid, all actions are applied to the change set data. If the changes are invalid, no changes are applied, and the error to the try this okay so we're gonna get the component that and then let's do component change set with the component and type is type and data is No function clause matching in change set cast. Component change set, we gave the component and the adders. The following arguments were given to. Oh, what is the output of this map 
put <clears throat> okay so our adders are this this is the adders adders and then we did type okay so adders equals atomic map convert adders and then type equal well what's adders type adders type sure and then data equal map dot put adders data type type okay that's fine and then adders equal map dot put adders data data that seems fine Do we have a component? Yeah. Component pipe that to component remove errors. Oh, component. Okay, and I think. Damn it. Okay, component equal component. There. component has put it through a chain set component change set component and type is the type data is the data and we've got an ecto change set then we'll put it through ecto change set apply action update that gives us an okay and a component so I'm not sure we need to apply the action. 
just take this. Um, and apply it to this. And have it equal this. So we just take the change set, apply that to repo update we get OK and a component All right, and let's do the compile do that and it works or at least no error Okay, we'll stop here.